As you might know, I have been working on this electronic light controller boards for a few months now, which I want to turn into a product eventually. Um, they will enable you to control all sorts of miniature lights, from various types of LEDs to incandescent bulbs, and display all sorts of patterns and cycles which you can program in any way you like. Of course, my initial use case was just to control all the small lamps I'm incorporating into my stop motion sets on an unwound clockwork, but since I started working on it, I realized there are many more possible applications. Currently, it's all powered from a single USB port, but soon it will also be possible to power it from a battery or really any other DC power source from 3 to 24 volts. My goal is to create a small and minimalistic, but also scalable and easy to use tool for versatile miniature lighting applications of all sorts. So in this video I want to update you on the progress of the development, um, show exactly how it works and what its capabilities are, and also set some expectations for the final product. Okay, let's start by talking about this new prototype boards, which arrived just a few weeks ago. All my PCBs were manufactured by PCBWay, who have been kindly sponsoring my latest batch of prototypes. They offer PCB production and assembly, as well as CNC milling and 3D printing, which might come in handy in the future. I designed my PCB with the Open KeyCut software and easily uploaded the Gerber files on PCBWay's website, which spits out a quotation instantly. I also opted for the assembly service, as my design includes lots of tiny SMD components, which would be very hard to solder by hand. For that, all I needed to do was to provide a bill of materials and someone would get back to me with a proper quotation for all the components and assembly costs. I was particularly impressed that they even found a little mistake in my design where a footprint didn't match the component quite well and they were getting back to me and asked how to handle it instead of soldering things blindly together, which I really appreciate. So a few weeks later the boards arrived and as you can see everything is precisely located and the soldering joints look really neat. I added the through hole components myself and was really glad when everything actually turned on and worked as intended. Please check out the link in the description down below to find out more about PCB production and huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring these prototype boards. So eventually I will make these boards available as a kit, um, leaving some of the larger components to be soldered by yourself, but um, all the intricate parts will be assembled in a factory of course. As you can see, the board has the screw terminals as outputs, as well as quite a few jumpers, basically very primitive switches, which can be used to reconfigure the circuitry and change the behavior of the board. Um, things like whether you want to power it with USB or with an external battery, for example. No worries, everything is nicely labeled on the board itself, and I will provide a proper instruction manual, of course, so you won't need to know a lot about electronics to use it. Now let's have a look at all the outputs and which kinds of lights can be controlled. So first there are three PWM channels, which are ideal for driving classic LEDs. And being three channels, this will also allow you to drive RGB LEDs. As our human perception of brightness is not really linear, there's also a little jumper switch down here, where you can switch to a logarithmic scale for these PWM outputs. Um, which will make the brightness levels appear a bit more equally distributed. Secondly, and most importantly, there is this voltage regulator on the board, which can output between 0 and 16 volts DC, which is perfect for driving small incandescent bulbs or even little DC motors. It has a dedicated output here, but you can also use its output power and route it to the LED channels. So for example, um, you could use the voltage regulator to create, I don't know, 3.2 volts if that's what your LED needs, and use that to drive the PWM channels, which I think is very convenient in some use cases, and um, it comes at zero costs because all I needed to put in was a little jumper on the board. Next we have this white little box up here, which is a relay, which can be used to switch higher voltages and currents. Um, in particular, this one is rated for 250 volts AC and 60 watts, so um, you can use it to switch um, bigger uh, studio lights or any other AC device with this board as well. And similarly, there's also a digital output, which you can use to interface with other electronics, um, or just use it as a power output, which can be switched on and off. 
So these are the outputs I have already implemented, um, but there will be more. Um, up here, there's an output for those um, NeoPixels. So you will be able to hook up those addressable RGB LEDs as well. Um, though I'm not sure how many yet. And um, secondly, there's also a DMX interface. So there's this little additional chip and three pins down here. And those will either function as a DMX input, where this device basically becomes a DMX slave, which can be controlled by any DMX controller you might have at hand, or it can itself function as a DMX master, putting out a DMX signal, so you could hook up any other um, DMX studio equipment there. In my opinion, this DMX interface will be a very powerful feature, because it also makes the system scalable. Um, imagine you want to have a few more output channels than this board provides. Um, what you could do is just take a bunch of them, um, have one operate as a DMX master and the others as DMX slaves, and then um, yeah, you could just um, add on more channels um, basically until you're running out of memory. Okay, so how exactly will you be able to control these lights now? Um, basically, there will be three modes of operation and one being this DMX slave mode I've just mentioned. And I'm using a similar approach to the other control modes. Basically, in DMX there is this concept of channels, um, usually 1 to 512. And each of these channels corresponds to one light and has a value between 0 and 255 which represents all brightnesses between um, fully on and fully off. And you just um, can change these values on a DMX controller and uh, the devices will reflect that brightness. So um, very straightforward. And on the bottom side of the board you will find this little table where you can read which DMX channel corresponds to which um, output. And so for example if you um, change DMX channel 3, you will alterate the third of the PWM outputs. So the first mode of operation I implemented was for my initial use case of stop motion animation in conjunction with the DragonFrame software. Um, so I implemented the DMC light protocol and what you can do now is hook up the board, um, select a DMC device under the connections tab and click connect and uh, the device will just connect fine and you will be able to create all your um, lighting channels under the DMX control tab um, yeah play with the play with the controls and it will be reflected on the brightness of your little lamps um, it also fully supports dragon frames input and output triggers so the outputs are the um, relay and the digital out, just like with the original DragonFrame DMX512 box. And um, the board has a little switch here, which acts as an input trigger. So um, yeah, just like with DragonFrame's DMX box, um, it's fully compatible with all those features. But what I think is more interesting for most of you probably is the third mode of operation, where the board will be able to play back pre-programmed lighting sequences completely independently of any other control software. So for programming these lighting sequences in the various channels, I had the idea to use a list of blocks which represent basically lighting functions, which will be played one after the other and then looped back to the beginning. And each block would represent one lighting function element. That could be something like a certain transition between one value to another value in a given amount of time, or a constant value for a given amount of time. And um, the reason I opted for this block programming approach instead of a curve is that I wanted to also include some special functions which cannot be represented by a simple curve. Um, mainly that would be loops, enabling you to loop a subset of blocks for a specific number of times, which I think um, can be uh, quite useful, especially when combining um, very short effects with long-term programming, things like, um, hey, fire, flicker for five minutes, but then do something different, <laughs> things like that. And also I want to have um, an option to have random elements in that program. For example, having a constant value for a random time to realize something like um, a randomized delay or having um, random values to um, create some yeah, random flickering effects, for example.
So these are things which cannot be properly represented by a curve and also that block approach was easier to, um, to program in software with the limited resources of that microcontroller. The duration of these blocks can be set between 10 milliseconds and 10 minutes. So that's quite a range and so you can either create very short flickering effects or extremely long slow um, transitions for something like a day-night cycle for example. So eventually I want to create a desktop software where you will be able to put together these lighting sequences in a what you see is what you get type of editor, uh, which will be very easy to use and then you can just upload the entire program with the click of a button to the board. Um, but of course it will take some time until that is ready. Um, so for the meantime I have created a very crude but fully functional um, interface which provides the same functionality right now. And that's a serial terminal menu. So um, when you hook up the board to the computer right now and open a serial terminal, it will basically display a text-based menu which you can navigate with your keyboard and use it to create uh, these sequences from the individual blocks uh, that way, step by step. Of course, that's not the most convenient interface, um, but it's also not that difficult either. Like I had a bunch of friends test it and they were all able to create various patterns with it. And I think it's really valuable to have something functioning early on. Um, I want to do the entire development in an iterative manner, like um, yeah, making step-by-step -step improvements over time, but um, still being able to provide something functioning very early on. And I think that will be beneficial for all of us. Oh, and there's one more super cool feature I nearly forgot to mention, and that's the function of that input trigger button in the pre-programmed control mode. So what could it do? Um, I had the idea to have two completely distinct sets of programs on here and pressing that button would um, switch from one program to another basically. So you can have some interaction in your um, lighting setup. Imagine a model with a little switch where you can switch from day to night for example or having a cosplay prop where you press a button and then a lighting effect is triggered. Things like that. Um, I think that's a really powerful feature and I can't wait to see what you will do with it eventually. So, um, how to continue? Um, obviously, there's still a lot of software to be written. Um, first, on the microcontroller of the board itself to enable all the features I've mentioned, but also um, that desktop software, which will enable you to put together these lighting programs out of the blocks in a more um, efficient, um, easy way, of course. Um, besides the software, I will also need to work on a new version of the board itself. Um, the new prototypes again have a few minor flaws, um, some things are not functioning as intended, but yeah, that has to wait until um, more of the software is done basically. So I think the next version of prototypes will already be in uh, 2025 then. So obviously it will take a while until things are properly finished. But um, in the meantime, as I said, I want to give out the first prototype boards, uh, these ones early on and uh, in a couple of months probably also these boards to early testers um, yeah, to receive some early feedback and um, yeah, have some people using them already. Um, if you're interested, um, please consider subscribing to that pre-order link. Um, you will receive notifications once some boards are available and also get some more regular updates about the development progress and also get a good discount once the thing is properly available, of course. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to work on this rather unusual project and can't wait to get it into your hands. And I'm also keen to hear your thoughts on it. Like, um, what would you use it for? Do you have any unusual ideas or um, ideas for things I should add um, functionality-wise? Um, yeah, I can't wait to read the comments under this video later on. So thanks a lot for watching and see you soon again with a new video about an unwound clockwork then. So have a good one and bye bye.